welcome back to DIY German Air Cool Garage. We are back here in the alley. It's almost summertime. It's beautiful. It's time to start projects again. We are now on episode 14. Uh, when we left you off on episode 12, we had just gotten finished putting the engine back in the bus. Unfortunately, I left you hanging. I never showed you how to start up a motor that's never been run before or just basically putting the motor back in a car. So today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to build oil pressure in the car. We're going to make sure and go through and do the carburetor balance, the linkage adjustments and all those type of things. So the carburetor balancing is one of those things that uh, so many air-cooled uh, folks uh, always looking to know the tricks of the trade. So today's episode is really going to help folks with any kind of uh, air-cooled engine, either four-cylinder or six-cylinder. So Volkswagens, Porsches, 356s, 911s, 912s, uh, we might bust with dual carburetors, uh, anything else with dual carburetors. But I did bring out my 912 engine, so we're going to be demonstrating both carburetor balancing and startup procedures here and showing you some other stuff on the, the 912 motor. Step one, step A, uh, on starting up a motor for the first time is to, one, build oil pressure. You want to make sure you're building oil pressure in the motor before you even put any kind of spark or getting the thing running at all. Um, so what we're going to do is we hooked up a remote starting switch because I'm by myself out here. This basically just connects the hot pole or the uh, power positive onto the starter onto the starter switch, which is basically the key uh, switch. But I'll show you that on the 912 motor here shortly. But so we're going to use this to fire the engine and get it cranking because, again, we want to build oil pressure. We also want to build fuel pressure. Uh, we did put a new high, uh, high flow oil pump on here, so we want to make sure all of those lines are tight, nothing's leaking there. So with the motor running, spraying fuel, uh, oil everywhere would be a huge mess. Alright, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the coil wire. You want to make sure that, the, again, the motor is not going to start up all of a sudden just start running. Because again, we want to make sure we build an oil pressure, getting fuel pressure, all that stuff's going. So again, took off the coil wire, now just hit the remote starting button and... Alright, I told you we'd be using the 912 motor as a learning tool today, and here we are, our first example. Uh, we're back here at the transmission area, the starter in particular. Uh, I wanted to show you where you hook your remote starting switch up to. This is the positive, or which the, connects to the battery on your starter, and then this is your starter uh, uh, solenoid, or your ignition switch. It's basically what you're turning on to engage the starter. So you just connect a pole to each one of these uh, on the car and then your remote starter switch creates a, cir a circuit which provides 12 volt spark to the solenoid which then turns the motor over like you just saw. Uh, again, you gotta have your key in the accessory or on position to get power to the battery. All right, so we got the uh, motor cranked up to about 30 seconds worth. Uh, looks like, I, I would assume, we have oil pressure in there. I checked the oil lines. Everything looks like uh, we're solid, not leaking there. Uh, let's check the fuel filter, the clear fuel filter. I see fuel in there. Looks like we're getting fuel pressure to the carburetors. Everything looks good. Again, I didn't hear any knocking or anything, so I think we're about ready to fire it up. To do that, we've got to put the coil wire back on. Now, um, you're going to use your remote starter here. Uh, as soon as the motor starts up, you're going to want to take your finger off of this because this is engaging the starter. But then once it is running, uh, you know, get in here and you know, try to get the carburetors opened up manually. Keep the engine running. Hopefully it will be running. And then uh, after we've got it running, we know that our next step is really just to go ahead and balance the carburetors. So let's give it a shot here. carburetors need to be balanced a little bit, idling a little bit low, but it looks like our original settings were really good to get us close. Again, when you got MSD ignition, you got brand new carbs, you got all that stuff set up really nicely, they do tend to start up pretty easily. We had the timing already set, so that was good. Uh, I'd say we're uh, ready to go with the next step. 
All right, I just ran around and turned the ignition off on the bus and to shut the motor down. Um, you know, even though you use your remote starter, you got to use the key to turn it off. Uh, in emergency, you can just pull the red wire off the, the coil, but uh, anyway, didn't have to do that this time. Now, one thing I, we didn't really talk about was setting the timing or anything with the ignition before we started this, uh, started the bus up. But as you may know, uh, this bus has MSD ignition and pointless or magnetic fire points. So what that means is that once this is set, this distance here, it never wears out, it's never gonna change. And then once you get your ignition set to where you want it to be, you basically just never have to change it. I prefer to run my ignition advance timing to be about 28 and a half to 30 degrees uh, advanced at about 3000 RPM. So that I time my cars to wah, like that. So you know the timing is set while it's running at high high revs but so again didn't have to set the timing on this but wanted to show you that now with all this kind of stuff in here and everything's all set up it's never going to change timing's never going to change so now what you can do is just go in and make a little sharpie mark right here so if you ever do have to take the distributor out you can just line up those little marks and you know that all your timing and everything's all set and ready to go All right, we're back at the 912. I wanted to take a little break, give my back a little bit of a rest and my swollen knee. Didn't feel like crouching over for this next steps to show you what we're basically going to be doing in balancing the carburetors. You really only need two tools. You need a screwdriver and you need an airflow meter. This is the standard airflow meter that uh, uh, you use on doing these type of carburetors, which again, uh, you can be found or used in Volkswagens, Porsches, uh, Bugs, Beetles, buses, Carmageas, uh, transporters, whatever, and also these carburetors are used in uh, 911s, 356s, uh, 912s, obviously. So what I'm showing you here is we're going to take. We need to obviously to balance the carburetors. We got to get to the velocity stacks, so we got to take the air cleaners off. These are the K&N washable style. Now this is a Delorto carburetor. The one on the bus is a is a Weber. But if you're looking at these things real closely, you can't tell them apart. So again, Delorto or Weber dual carburetor balancing is what we're doing. So there you go. You can see there's one carburetor, one air filter set up there. We'll just put that on the ground. We'll get this one off. So basically, again, the only two tools you usually need to are a small screwdriver and airflow meter. You can see our velocity stacks here. Our uh, airflow meter goes in. What we're, our, what we're going to try to accomplish by turning this idle adjustment screw is we're going to try to get these, uh, this airflow meter indicator uh, to come up to a certain level, probably a two and a half, three, somewhere around in there, I would imagine. And then we're going to try to get both of these to read exactly the same, two and a half, three, or wherever they each fall. Now, typically, you don't, have, you don't do all four of them like this. You can to make sure they're both breathing the same, which you might see slight differences. I've seen slight differences in the past, but basically just right off the fronts like that. Get the air flows. You can see here, here's your adjuster, uh, which you will demonstrate here in a minute on the car that's running. But so we'll adjust the idle right here. Then on the sides, we have our, once the carburetors are balanced from an idle perspective, then we go through and we set the idle rich mixture. Uh, so that says uh, something else we'll do. Uh, you have to do that with the cars running because basically you're trying, you're listening for when the car is running perfectly on idle by each carburetor. And that's a little detail, but I'll show you how that's done here on the motor that's running. Okay, we're about ready to start the engine up. Well, after we get the engine started up, we're going to use the airflow meter on each carburetor to balance the the uh, idle adjustments. Again, we are just balancing the idle adjustment. Once the carburetor has been opened, there is no adjustments that you do. So, idle adjustment, we'll do the idle richments. But so, the next step, let's start this thing up. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me once it's running, but I'll try to speak up a little bit. Ignition switch is on. We've got our remote starter. Got to keep the engine going. Now, typically you're going to want to have the motor kind of get warm or you're going to want to see where it wants to idle. Because when it's cold, obviously it doesn't idle as well as it would when it's warm. 
So we're gonna do this cold, let the motor warm up, and then we'll do it all over again. So it looks like it'll idle right about there. So take our adjuster. Looks like I've got about four, maybe three and a half, four on that. Again, it would be so much easier to see in a different type of motor. But it's the bus, here's what it is. That one's a little, about the same, but it's idling super low. So I think we're actually gonna bring this side up just a little bit. We'll see what happens. You hear the motor starting to run a little faster. I can see that the, the airflow meter is indicating about five now. So we'll just keep that at five, and then what we'll do is we'll match this side at five and see what it does to the idle. And the motor's starting to rev up a little bit. There we go. We're at, looks like we're at five right there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty much probably where I'd want it to idle. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit faster. But so far, that seems to be okay. Now we're gonna continue to go back and forth to make sure that it's perfect. Now you can hear it starting to warm up a little bit. It sounds like it's starting to run a little faster. This side looks like it's come up a little bit. So we'll back that off just a smidge. That looks just about right. That looks right at five. That one looks right at five. Maybe just a little fast. Now that looks good. So, check that one. Yeah, maybe a little faster. There we go, that's idling pretty good right there. Oh, I picked up real well. That's nice, picks up good. Now, know that our idle is pretty much balanced between the two carburetors. Again, I'm still seeing right at five. That's a little fast now. See, I think the motor's starting to warm up. Which is good. Just 
the rest of the idle jets. I'm going to be quiet here for a second so I can actually do this properly. Turn around, get a little more comfortable. We're back at the 912 engine. Wanted to take uh, just a couple minutes to show you what it, how easy it is from here. From this angle, you can see everything real easy, and I can explain it to you. But again, your air uh, flow meter in the Venturi stack. This is the idle adjustment that you would saw us looking to adjust the r the flow of air or the rate, and that's you know using this uh, idle screw. The air goes up and down, and then you saw me messing with what I was calling the uh, idle jet, which is the rich lean mixture for the idle. Each cylinder has a rich lean mixture. So on this one, you heard me, I was turning it in until the motor started to kind of fall on its face. And then once it falls on its face, I turn it out about a quarter to a half turn is all. Usually about a quarter, but really just you turn it in ever so slowly until all of a sudden the motor starts to go, kind of falls down a little bit, then about a quarter turn like that. Uh, and again, you have to do that on all four. You'll see these uh, on next to each uh, circuit on the carburetor. But in and then out. You can screw them all the way out like that and then go in and you'll see that uh, it should run real nice after that as we demonstrated earlier. <laughs> Now that we've got the throttle or the idle adjustment set cor correctly, we know now that the throttles, uh, or the idle, is bottomed out to the perfect position to make the motor run. You heard we did the uh, rich lean mixture, all that stuff's working good. So that means we've got our baseline for our carburetors. Next, we need to check linkage to make sure that the linkage is adjusted properly. Now, this is important only when you're just barely starting to get off the throttle because what you want is you want this linkage to be adjusted in such a way that both of these carburetors are coming off idle at the exact same time and duration. Uh, so best way to do that is to kind of get your thumb on here on start using the linkage. You can use your finger on one side and look at the other one. You can feel it when this one's opening up over here. This one's opening up just a little bit as I'm doing that. So I can feel that it's uh, actually coming open where this one isn't. So now I go to the other side. Yeah, I can see that this linkage looks to be adjusted a little too long. So I have a choice. I can either make this one shorter or this one, I mean, I'm sorry, make this one shorter or make this one longer. But again, my goal is to make sure that this stuff or these, the carburetors are coming off idle at exactly the same time. If you don't, you sometimes feel a little bit of a gu -gu 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 as you come off the line. It just kind of stumbles a little bit because both carburetors aren't working in, uh, in harmony. Now, once you're open the throttle, there is no adjustments anymore, and it's pretty this wide open Venturi's in there, so it's not a big deal. It's really just as you're getting off of idle. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take uh, loosen up this linkage. Um, now, there's different kind of linkages for almost every vehicle. In this case, I'm using an 8 millimeter to hold the linkage, but a 3 8 on the top because you know, this being a Volkswagen, I got it from CB Performance. You know, some of the parts are made in America, so that's cool. But you can see I loosen that up, um, and you do the same thing on the top. And then you, you turn this which makes the linkage go shorter or longer so we wanted it to go a little shorter so i just made a little snug and called it good and then you want to you want to make sure that all of these things line up in a nice perpendicular fashion so you take your wrench and you want to hold that bottom linkage on there tighten it down you go to the top readjust here which you know adjust it anytime you turn these it is working on threads so sometimes it might take you a couple attempts <laughs> and again one that turns one way one turns the other so they are reverse threads so i've done that now again take your finger look at this side over here Ooh. see now this side's opening way far way quicker so that was a lot of adjustment i put on there so we're going to go through and do this again. And this is basically a trial and error process. 
that once it's done, you're done. You don't have to really ever do it again unless you take the carburetors off. Uh, but that doesn't happen often either. But again, once you get used to this type of work, it's easy. So we need to make this longer. So we go like so. Oh, that's nice. Yep, I think I like that a lot. I'm super happy. All right, so I'm gonna tighten that up and then uh, I'm gonna go through and do a rebalance on the carburetors. Uh, again, just to lower the idle. Uh, doing this adjustment here would not have changed the carburetor balance at all. So we're pretty much good to go. I'm gonna fire it up, button it up, and call it good.